Hello everybody, welcome back to the final lesson in this workshop where we're going to be focusing on drawing a realistic portrait using our charcoal pencils. If you want to see how I created this drawing in real time, then it is available over on my Patreon along with over 300 other real time tutorials that you can access for just a small amount per month. For each real time tutorial, there will be the full narration and also all of the references, sketch outlines and materials list you need to follow along with the tutorials yourself. But if a monthly membership isn't right for you or you just want to focus on improving your charcoal drawing skills, then over on my website, I've got lots of different courses to help you master charcoal drawing. I've got a course on there for drawing portraits in charcoal, also drawing animals in charcoal and still life objects in charcoal. But if you really want to improve your skills, you can get all three of those courses in my drawing bundle. And if you are interested, in my courses you can get 15% off if you use the code save15 at checkout. So I really recommend checking out that drawing bundle and I'll leave a link to my course website and to my Patreon in the description below. As always, I have got the sketch outline already down and I included the main facial features and a basic outline of the hair in the sketch. Keep your sketch nice and light and remember to use graphite instead of charcoal because it's a lot easier to erase if you make mistakes. So let's get straight on to the shading process and I'm starting off like I've done in other lessons with the 2B charcoal pencil. And I'm going to work from the top of the drawing all the way down to the bottom to help avoid smudging the charcoal too much. And I'm starting off therefore with the hair. And it's important that you leave any highlights within the hair nice and clear so you don't add any charcoal to the highlighted areas. When I'm drawing hair, I do draw it very much like I did fur by going in lines that are going with the direction that each section of hair is curving in. So with the way the hair is curving around the face. So I just sweep my pencil in strokes and because the hair is very long, it's going to be very long pencil strokes that you're going to be doing. So I tend to go from the root of the hair and then I finish my pencil stroke either where it then starts to meet into a highlight or I go from one end where the root is all the way to the other side of the hair that we can see. And when I stop at a highlight, you can see on the fringe there is this sort of highlight in the center. I make sure to end my pencil strokes at slightly different points so that there's a really nice subtle transition into where the highlight is rather than just a really obvious sort of cut off line because that will make the highlights look a bit unrealistic if you do it that way. Also, I make sure to be nice and loose, especially around the little messy loose bits of hair that you can see falling down by the ear and the bottom of the ponytail. So make sure that you have any little messy bits and kept nice and loose with your pencil strokes. Whereas when the hair has been scraped back, it can be a lot more sort of uniformed. I then go and fill in the eyebrows and I just block these in. This sort of first stage is not about including a lot of detail, it's just about getting in the main shadows. So that is what I'm using the 2B pencil for, just to block in the darkest shadows to start off with. I then go in and I'm working on the eyes and in general, the darkest parts of the eyes tend to be the pupil around the eyes, sort of like the lash line and the waterline sometimes, especially if a woman or man is wearing like um, eyeliner on their waterline, it can be very dark. And I'm also including the upper crease, which tends to be quite dark as well. Make sure to leave clear any highlights, and these tend to be in the pupils, but can also be in the white of the eye as well. I then fill in the nostrils and most of the shadow on a nose tends to be the underneath side by the nostrils and on the sides. So you can see that I've also blocked in the side of the nose as well. I then move on to the mouth and there wasn't too much really dark shadow in the lips, just the outer corners and normally if you can see the inside of the mouth that tends to be very dark as well because not much light can get into the inside of the mouth. I'm then working on the neck, the shoulders, and you can see that she's got this sort of bag on her shoulder. So there's a very dark strap that I also got in as well. But that is pretty much it for all of the darkest shadows. And now I'm moving on to using my H pencil to block in all of the mid-tones. 
So again, I work from the top of the drawing all the way down to the bottom to once again help prevent smudging. And when I'm shading in the skin, I often go in circular motions to keep the shading nice and even. Or you can go in the hatching method if you want. I find that the circular motion is a lot easier for beginners to learn because when you do the hatching method, you have to make sure that you're maintaining the same pressure with every stroke that you do, whereas it's a lot easier to maintain a constant pressure with doing circular motions. To help get really light, even shading, remember to hold the pencil further towards the back and use the side of the pencil to shade. This also stops any like really stubborn pencil strokes and uh, pencil strokes that are a lot harder from showing through and getting onto your drawing because these can be really hard to actually blend out. I'm also working on getting in all of the darkest shadows around the eyes. The, the space between the eye and the eyebrow has got a bit of shadow as well as the inside of the eye by the nose and on the other side, the outside of the eye as well. So I'm really studying the reference to pick out all of the darkest shadows within the skin and I specifically build up more layers using my H pencil in those areas. With the nose, like I said, there's a lot of shadow on the sides and also on the underneath part of the nose by the nostrils. So I'm making sure to get in those areas first. You can see that I am leaving a lot of areas white for now, even though that they are not white in the reference image. And that is because when we blend it out, like we have with other drawings, we do add a bit of that charcoal onto these areas. So even though I'm aware that these areas aren't white in the reference, they will be getting a little bit of tone added to them when we blend out. So it's important to leave all of the highlighted areas white for now. I'm also filling in the top and bottom lip because this is quite dark in the reference. It just wasn't dark enough for the 2B pencil. And I did miss out the highlight as well in the middle of the bottom lip. So when you are working on the skin, it's important to know where these highlighted areas are. And in general, if someone is looking straight on and they've got normal lighting on them, I found that the highlights tend to be in the center of the chin, on the cheekbones, the middle of the forehead and also the middle of the nose as well, the tip of the nose. And this tends to be, if you do makeup, where you'd highlight and where you'd contour tends to be where it's more shadowed. I'm also filling in the bottom of the chin with a lot of shadow by the jawline and I'm also going to start shading the neck. Now the sides of the neck are very dark and then you've got that highlight towards the centre. So I'll just be adding a base layer of shading everywhere and then building up multiple layers where you can see it's more shadowed on either side. I'm now going to switch back to my 2B pencils and just before I go and blend it all out, I want to make sure that I've got everything dark enough that needs to be more shadowed. So I'm going back over the areas that I've already added a bit of 2B pencil to, for example, the mouth, the eyebrows, and now that I've got everything in, it's a lot easier to see if things need to go even darker. And you want to do all this before we blend it out. So if you know that you need to go a bit darker in certain areas, this is the time to do that. So now I'm happy with my first base layer, let's go and blend everything out and just like all of the other lessons, I'm going to first blend over the whole thing using my De La Rowney round paintbrush. Like I said though, you can use any round fluffy paintbrush that you want, you can even use makeup brushes, they tend to be really good for this sort of thing. And again when I'm doing this process, I work from the top to the bottom of the drawing as well. So I'm just going in circular motions over the skin and when I'm pa painting, when I'm shading over the hair, I follow the direction that that section of hair is curving in. But with the skin to get the smoothest look, go in circular motions. And I'm just blending over everywhere, even onto the highlighted areas because we do want to tone them. So we don't want to leave them white. So it's important that you do blend over the whole thing. It's also important to blend over the teeth because they aren't white in the reference and this is something that a lot of beginners make the mistake of doing is leaving the teeth just pure white and they will have a lot of shading to them, especially the teeth that are further back. The front teeth have more light getting to them so they are the brightest but if you want the teeth to have more dimension make sure that they are getting darker and darker as the teeth go further back, so for the teeth that are further back. 
and I also just added a little bit of charcoal powder to the background. Now to blend everything out even more, as you guys know, we have been using tissue for this. So I've wrapped a clean bit of tissue around my fingers and tissue that doesn't have any patterns works best for this, but I'm using tissue that does have a bit of pattern because it's the only thing I had in the house at the moment. So you can still get a really smooth result with just normal like toilet paper. And I not only am blending out the skin, but I'm also picking up a bit of charcoal onto the tissue to get it dirty. And I'm using that to add more shading to the background. So you don't just have to use the tissue to actually lighten up and to blend, but you can also use it to darken up values as well. Once again, when I'm using tissue, I like to blend in circular motions to really blend out those pencil strokes and get rid of any graininess that we can see. Now, as you can see, we've got a really nice base layer down already, and it's just time to really build up more details. You can see that when we blended it out, the shadows got a little bit lighter, which does happen because we are blending the shadow into further areas. We're blending out that charcoal into the highlights. So it does lighten up the drawing a bit. So it's important that we do go back in and add in a second layer. So I'm starting off with the 2B pencil to do this, going back over the hair. And you can see that again, I am not going over everything. I'm just going over the darkest areas. And this step should be pretty easy to do because you're just going over the exact same areas you added it to in the first place. Also the forehead, as you can see in the reference, is quite dark. So I added a little bit of shading with my 2B pencil to the forehead as well. Now to get the hair even darker because it is very black in the reference, you can go in with the charcoal block, which I found is a little bit darker than the 2B pencil, even though they are both 2B. And I'm just using that particularly at the roots of the hair where it does get really dark, just to shade over. Now for the darkest areas, to keep them nice and dark, I do blend with my fingers. And then for the lighter areas, I blend with the paintbrush. But if you want to keep an area jet black, then fingers are always great to use to blend out those areas. So now I'm just blending over the skin where I added that bit of 2B and I am gonna start pulling some charcoal with my brush from the hair and using that to darken up any shadows on the skin that I need to. And now I'm gonna build up a second layer with the 2B pencil on the eyebrows, on the eyes, all over those same places that we already have worked on. And at this point you can start to build up more details if you want to. So in our first layer, we weren't really focusing on drawing in individual eyebrow hairs. We were just blocking in the basic shape and we haven't got in eyelashes on the eyes. I like to leave details like that as the last thing to do because when you blend them out, you'd lose all of that detail anyway. So you'd have to go over them again. I'm also going back over the nose and you can use this layer to start to define the structure and the anatomy of the features of the face even more, like the nose. Once again, keep blending over each layer if there's any graininess that you want to get rid of. And then I'm just going over the eyes once more. And this step, as well as adding in the highlights at the end, really does start to make it pop and look really realistic. Okay, so whilst I'm working on this second layer of shading and blending it out, just like we've done before, I'm gonna be going through some basic beginner mistakes that I see people make when they're drawing portraits. So let's start off with the hair. One thing that you don't wanna do is try and drawing every single strand of hair. It's really important to work on the hair in sections and not try and draw in hundreds of thousands of individual hairs. That won't build up a lot of volume and it won't make your drawing look realistic. Another mistake I see people make is that they don't add flyaway hairs. So when you look at photos, you'll see that you have the majority of the hair, and then you'll see that around the hair, going over into the background, there's a lot of loose flyaway hairs, which really help to make the hair look natural and not too rigid. Now, when I add in flyaway hairs, I try to have a variety of thicknesses. So I'll have some that are single strands and then some that are more clumps of flyaway hairs. I'll also have some that are very light and very subtle and then others that are a lot darker and stand out more to really help add depth to the hair. 
Now moving on to the eyebrows and the eyes, a common mistake that I see people make with eyebrows is just doing them as a block and it looks like the eyebrows are stuck onto the skin rather than hairs that are growing out of the skin. So make sure that you do include a few individual eyebrow hairs to make it look like they are hairs and not just a tattoo on top of the skin. With eyes, a lot of people leave the white of the eyes bright white just like teeth. Whereas the white of the eyes can actually have quite a lot of shadow to them. Another thing is with the nose and the lips, I see that these are common features that a lot of people like to outline around. Now any outlining in a portrait is not going to make it look realistic, it's going to give it more of a cartoony look to it. Because we don't have outlines around our facial features, it's all soft shadows. So make sure you don't do any harsh edges around the edges of the lips and also on the nose, on the sides of the nose especially. Now what I'm doing now is you can see in the reference she had a lot of little blemishes and moles and what I wanted to do is get in this texture to the skin so it looks more realistic to the reference image. So I just went in with my 2B pencil and I blocked in all of these little moles and blemishes and I wanted to then make them look like they're part of the skin rather than just drawn on dots. So I smoothed over them with the paintbrush and even further with the tissue. And you can see that that just makes the skin look a lot more realistic and accurate to the reference just by adding those few details. Now it's time to move on to one of the final steps which is adding in all of the highlights with the Tombow Mono Eraser. I'm starting off by adding the highlights to the eyes and the main highlights were in the inner corner of the eyes and this tends to be a highlight in many references. I'm also highlighting a bit of the white of the eye and I'm creating that bright highlight in the pupil and I'm also adding some highlights just below the eye as well. And if you're finding it hard to figure out where you need to highlight, look at your drawing and the reference and pick out areas that in your drawing look a lot darker than they are in the reference. And all of those areas you can use the eraser on just to lift up the values. If you need to lift up the value only a little bit, then the kneaded eraser might be a better option because it's a bit more subtle, whereas the eraser is a bit harsher and it lifts up more of the charcoal. So I'm just doing the same thing with the second eye and I'm also going to start moving on to getting in the highlights within the skin and also on the ear. And you can actually see that in her ear is a headphone and there's a long headphone cable coming down so it's important to highlight them as well because they are really bright. I also added in the highlights for the lips and the centre of the nose and I'm also moving on to adding some of the highlights throughout the hair. It's really important to add flyaway hairs on top of the hairstyle as well. So I like to use my eraser to do this and particularly in the fringe where that area of hair is a lot more messy and free flowing, that's where I like to add some little flyaway hairs with the eraser as well. Whereas the hair that's pulled back into the ponytail is going to be a lot more uniformed. I also added in the highlights on the cheek and the forehead and all of those areas of the skin that are a bit brighter. And now I'm going to finish off by adding in the final details with my 2B pencil. So the last thing that I do is add in little eyebrow hairs and eyelashes. And it's important that you make sure that your eyelashes are curving in the right direction. The eyelashes on the upper lash line tend to be a lot fuller and the eyelashes on the bottom lash line are a lot sparser. Now at this point I thought that I'd finished the drawing but I noticed one thing after leaving it overnight that I actually wanted to smooth out the skin a lot more. I felt like it was a bit too patchy. So I finally went over the whole thing with some tissue and I thought that this final step really helped to make the drawing so much more realistic and I felt like those blemishes were still a bit too harsh. So this shows that it's really important to leave your drawing when you think it's done and then come back and look at it with a pair of fresh eyes and you'll notice things that you might need to tweak. Because when you've been looking at it for so long, you can think it's great and then just coming back to it, it just makes you notice so much more. I'm now finishing off by adding a few more shadows because the tissue can lighten certain areas a bit too much. So I'm just shading a bit more, particularly on the cheeks and I'm just blending over it. But this is the final portrait and you can see it looks a lot better after those couple of final changes than it did before. It makes such a big difference just looking back over your finished work. I really hope you guys enjoyed this workshop and you learn a few new tips for how to make your drawings with charcoal even better. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon. Bye everybody.